Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stogie Geeks Shorts. This segment is going to be all about a football-themed cigar from the Florida Dominicana. I have with me on the lines via Skype, Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, Paul. So, uh, Will, why don't you introduce our very special guest to tell us about this football-themed cigar? Yes, uh, we have uh, our friends from La Florida Dominicana. We have uh, Mr. Tony Gomez and uh, Mr. John Carney. And they created this special football cigar with a big game in mind, which we're going to talk about. Um, a big matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers. But Tony, John, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Glad to be here. Thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us, man. So, um, uh, Tony and John, where did the idea for a football theme cigar come from? So, as you know, I travel a lot. And if any of you follow on social media, uh, I, I document most of my travels, so I'm, I'm all over the place. So last year, in uh, actually in 2014, towards the end of the year, and towards the end of the last uh, professional football season, uh, we were sitting at Baxter's Cigars in Phoenix, talking to the manager there, Joe Barnett. I think he goes by El Jefe now, from something I just uh, saw online. They were doing some <laughs> videos, so uh, the, a few of them are referring to him as Jefe. Uh, but Joe and I and uh, Andy, my rep, were all sitting around a table uh, just talking about different ideas and whatnot, and we, uh, we I can say I, I was looking for a reason to go back out to Arizona, uh, and uh, Joe hit us with the idea of why don't you make a cigar uh, that's a football-related cigar uh, that can be sold in areas where major football events are going on and during uh, the professional and college football seasons uh, to kind of commemorate uh, one of America's favorite sports. Um, so we threw around a couple different ideas and a couple different names, and we really liked it. And a few uh, weeks later, Lido actually happened to be out there as well for some events um, and sat down in the same environment and had a similar conversation. Um, so truly, this was, this was a conceived uh, with a retailer, uh, said Baxter Cigars in Arizona. Um, and and uh, from the beginning, uh, this was uh, something that, uh, that was a cool collaboration um, from that retail visit. So it, it's unique. I, you know, a lot of these ideas that, that you have on the road, uh, you know, you, the unique company, the way we're set up, uh, we're able to do some of these unique programs and these unique projects um, and these special ideas that come from our creative retailers. So, you know, we, we have other cigars that are named after unique concepts uh, that have come up in the past. For example, like the El Jaco um, and, the, uh, and the Billy Club, which came from that, is from our retailer Jack Schwartz in the Chicago area. So it's really special to have retailers that are involved um, and make sure that uh, they were involved in this, in this uh, partnership that we have with our cigars. So that's how it was conceived. And uh, the idea at that time too, was to release it every year to a different state. Uh, this year being in California, um, we're gonna feature it in Santa Clara with retailers in that area. And it's available across the whole state of California. Um, and next year, we're thinking about doing it, uh, continuing the process, and continuing the program in Texas. And then the next so now, year, so, uh, uh, so I'm sorry. So, uh, Tony, uh, so this is the second time that you've done a football theme cigar, is that correct? Right. Yeah. So when they came to you, did, now did you design and blend this this particular for both years? Uh, yeah, so we, we blended in-house at the factory, and uh, as you'll notice, this year's design is a little different from last year's. Um, we decided to kind of take it to the next level, make it a little prettier. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, just having fun at the factory, man, screw down. We, we, we made about, I don't know, say about six or seven different designs, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the one we decided on. Nice. Yeah, so like, what were you trying to channel when you are trying to come up with a football-themed cigar? Well, you know, we, we tried not to outsmart ourselves too much, you know. It's put a football on it and mm -hmm. <laughs> a great blend. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, we, we, wanted to, we wanted to make it a little nicer this year. Uh, last year's was, was very simple. It was very effective. People loved it. Um, but, you know, uh, we, wanted, we wanted to change it up a little bit and, and, uh, and you know, yeah, just make it as nice as we could, man. So, Tony, tell me, uh, tell me about the blend uh, for the 2016 version that I'm smoking here today. What you got there, you got a, you got a Habano wrap blend, okay? Um, the designs are made with a, a Connecticut shade, and, um, and the filler and the binder are, are Dominican from our farm. Uh, you'll find, that I'd say the blend is probably very similar to, a, to an airbender, double press. It's kind of in that mold. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's a nice medium body. It's not too full. 
it's not a, it's not, you know, one of those traditional LaFleur powerhouses. This is kind of a cigar we want for everybody that, you know, we hope that everybody can enjoy. So uh, we made it palatable to everybody. Not too strong, not too mild, very smooth, a lot of good flavors. Yeah, I'm getting a wonderful sweetness component to this blend. Yeah, and I'm not just saying that because you're on the show. Like, right. really, from the time I lit it up, like, it's just this wonderful sweetness that coats your palate. Sure, yeah, there's definitely a sweetness, uh, possibly a little bit of a nuttiness. Uh, that's kind of what I always find uh, in, in Habano wrap yeah, blends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in fact, the funny thing is Paul and I were talking about smoking cigars right off the truck last night. And yeah. uh, I was a little worried after we said that. I'm like, we're going to be smoking these. But there is no... These are smoking perfect. I mean, <laughs> got them down there fast enough. So, <laughs> yeah, I want to, you know, I want to give a shout out to our UPS delivery person <laughs> yes. here in the studio because he came in early this morning before I got here and I had missed the delivery. And I'm like, oh no, I'm like, what am I going to do? And then, like, a half an hour later, I see him on the, the camera and he's outside and he came back to deliver this cigar, almost like he knew how important his mission was, John and Tony, to get me this cigar. So props to our UPS driver. He's awesome. I, I learned something today from UPS, to be honest with you, because, uh, you know, there was no humidity loss there because they left Miami at, like, 9 o'clock last night. Mm. Um, I didn't realize that UPS delivered at 7 in the morning. Yeah, he was here I early. Yeah. Those guys never stop, man. No. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank yep. you so much for, for providing the cigar. This is a real uh, a real treat to smoke. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, so is this something that you think you're gonna continue, you know, every year? People have loved it so far. Uh, I see no reason why why we wouldn't, you know. Um, and I, I think, you know, this year will be huge in California, next year in Texas should be, you know, even bigger, I'd say. So um yeah, we, we look forward to, to continuing doing this, yeah. Uh, Tony, I want to ask you, um, the Connecticut Shade wrapper that appears uh, both at the foot and the head and, of course, makes up the football in the middle of the cigar, do you find that it impacts the flavor as you smoke it? Like, can you tell when, when you hit that wrapper? <clears throat> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it'll be – it'll be a, uh, it's going to add a slight bit of complexity to it, you know. Uh, it's, it's especially when you get to the football portion of it, which mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, obviously a, a, a thicker amount of wrapper there. But, yeah, it's going to add a little bit of nuance. Um, nothing extreme, I wouldn't say, but it'll, it'll add something, definitely. How, how long does it take, I mean, just to make the football on the cigar? To make the football, well, we, we've devised kind of a system where, you know, we're basically, you know, we, we take the wrapper and we, we made a... a we we call it a we call it troquel in uh in the factory, but basically yeah we just we just cut it out you know it's kind of like a stamp, mm -hmm. and so that that's kind of quick and we we made we made the football um, shape, um, that took a little while to perfect there, but once we got that you know it's it's pretty quick. The real difficult part there is the laces. Yeah, that's what that's what takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to do. Um, you know obviously to have them straight to have them as mm -hmm. perfect as you can. So yeah. And, yeah. And so what what holds it on top of uh, the wrapper? It'd be the same the same glue that you use uh, for the head, uh, which is it's an all natural um, you know vegetable glue. What is the, uh, so what is the word for that? I always forget the word for that. Uh, it's it's some kind of like a yeah, it's a vegetable glue, you know. Just vegetable yeah. vegetable glycerin. I mean, uh, pectin. Pectin. I mean, that's pectin that's is I've heard it called pectin. There's probably yeah, a Spanish it, word for it. Similar to pectin. Okay. It's just like a sugar. It's not a sugar paste, though. That's a no, sweet cap. Right. They use a sugar paste. That's different, right? right exactly. It's yeah. not going to add any flavor. You can't. You can't taste the glue. You know. Right. Uh, so that it's not going to have any effect on the flavor of the cigar whatsoever. Awesome. But you, you look at the design of this thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it looks like it's a football in between two yard lines. It, it is mm. really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Also, you know, it's 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 a perfecto. You know. Kind of a football is also perfecto, and then you know the football's got the two lines on the side and the laces in the middle, uh, so that was kind of also part of the inspiration for it. Oh yeah, I, yeah, it's true. Yeah, and it is fin it's fantastic. It's smoking. It's really great. good. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. We've got some great flavors coming off of it. And we don't we don't often sing praises about cigars that we smoke on the show during the segment. So I'm I'm kind of distracted because I'm trying to pay attention to the cigar because it, it's commanding my attention. Great. And now let's talk a little bit about uh, last year's football release. Is that the one you're smoking, John? Yeah, this is the one I have here. Okay. Five and three quarters by 60. 
Uh, Habano wrapped as well. This was a play off of our uh, Lee Harrow cabinet line mm -hmm. um, with the football on it. And I said the first rendition of it, very unique, still special. Uh, we've used the football on there uh, that we've used in the second edition. That's where that came from. Uh, but you can tell that this year is a little more elaborate and uh, – you know, there's a lot more planning that went into this edition than, uh, than last year's. And, and the reality is uh, it started to take off. It was very, very popular in Arizona. It's been incredibly popular in uh, California. It, it's starting to get a little cult following around. I have uh, some friends of mine that I've met on the road from uh, Syracuse that are big supporters of our product. Um, and they've purchased like 15 boxes uh, and for all their friends and things for, uh, for all the football games that are going on. So it, it's starting to get a big following nationwide. Um, and it's truly making an impact in those retailers and something special that they can have uh, so during this. Um, for, so for both releases, there were specific retailers only that are able to sell these cigars. Is that correct? Yes, it's exclusive. Last year, we make it exclusive towards um, towards one state. Yep. Uh, and you can put two and two together uh, for those reasons. State that's hosting an important. Yeah, this yeah, is important. It's, right. it's professional sporting events and collegiate events in these areas. Uh, last year was Arizona, uh, featured around uh, Scottsdale and the Glendale area. Uh, this year is focused in California and the Santa Clara area, uh, which is San Francisco. Um, and uh, next year, you know, with this continued success that we've had with it, uh, we hope to uh, launch the next edition in uh, Texas. Excellent. That's really cool. So uh, you have to find a retailer in those states in order to order this, right? Yes, absolutely. You have to call them up or? It'll be exclusively through those retailers. Um, if you search on our website, uh, lfdcigars.com, and go to our retailer section on the top uh, bar with our links, uh, you can find any of our California retailers, and about 99% of the retailers uh, did bring these in. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, that's a location, if you're looking for them specifically and having struggles finding it, uh, you can see the retailers that we work with in California on our website, and uh, that'll have their contact information available. And these come in um, what count boxes? The 2016. 10 count boxes. 10 count? It's coming 10 count boxes. This year's edition, uh, the MSRP on that is uh, $12 mm -hmm. per cigar. Obviously, with uh, California has uh, around a 20% tax, so you're looking $12 to $13 uh, at the most on that uh, cigar for this year's edition. Last year's was around 10 to 11 mm -hmm. um, And we hope this said continue that, that same range uh, as we go forward. Uh, so it's something that uh, you know, people who are really behind it, or even collectors, you know, now it's becoming somewhat, when you have a couple editions of anything, you know, it becomes like a collection. As you're looking back here, the Factory Press 2 we were just talking yes. about. One of my uh, favorites. So, you know, collectors uh, that are uh, looking, collecting this, uh, you know, we plan on keeping the same pricing structure, the same box structure mm -hmm. um, with different designs each year. Um, so, uh, 10 count boxes, they have to order them from the retailers. Um, any thoughts as to what's coming next in the in next year's design? Um, well, we we like I was saying earlier, we we did about I, don't know, I think six or seven different styles mm -hmm. uh, before we chose the one that we did for this year. So, but we left a couple of things on the table, a couple of cool ideas. So we'll we'll have a few different things to play with next year, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. I, I'm I'm looking for the naming of this to be called the Special Football Edition Siete. I know it's the third edition, but it will actually commemorate the sixth championship of one of my favorite teams no, uh, in the next not. season. So I, I don't know. Not going to happen. Cinco, Cinco for my team. No uh, dogs. Oh boy. <laughs> The only thing we was gonna go there. Uh, we're all. I'm with the John. Way, I'm with John, though. I'm, I'm with John. So there, which I'm sure there are. I'm taking credit for that Broncos win on behalf of the Miami Dolphins because if that would have been in New England, you would have won, and we beat you the last game, and it was in Denver, and you lost. I know that would have implied that we actually tried, though. <laughs> we spotted them. We spotted the Broncos fourteen hey, with two picks. Hey, that's, you, that's right. I don't feel advantage of crazy man. <laughs> hey, let me tell you that Broncos effort against New England, that defensive effort was one of the best I've seen in the playoffs in a long time. That defensive I mean, line was out of control. He was second amazing. best only to the Patriots defense in the game as well. <laughs> Yes, I would agree with John. Being a homer out of the situation, what a great game. What yeah. a great game. No, I agree. It was a good game. It was a great game. 
take you by those two interceptions, and uh, and you're you're looking at a, a six to twelve game at the end of the game. There, I mean, it was it was a great game. I've, I've witnessed two violent Broncos losses this year. I've witnessed one in person, and uh, so it was a lot for me to take. And uh, mm-hmm. I am now in. As a Patriots fan, I'm embracing the hate, and I'm a Cam Newton fan. <laughs> go, go Panthers! I'm with you yep. on that. Well, I'm 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 in Charlotte, and it's a, and I'm not a Panthers fan, but I'm in Charlotte, and I've been called a hater because <laughs> you're not a Panthers fan. Be, because I'm not a Panthers fan, and I've been, I'd say I I went I've said something critical about them, and you can't you're not allowed to say anything critical in Charlotte about the Panthers. I've learned very quickly, you know, like <laughs> like yeah, I mean they. They, look, here's the deal. They played a very easy schedule this year. No one can argue that. They they won their games. They get credit. But I will say they stepped up in the playoffs big time. They really that, did. That game against uh, the Cardinals was yeah. one of the biggest beatdowns, playoffs or anything aside, that I've ever seen. The way they stepped up on both sides of the ball, I mean, I, they're they're unbeatable in my opinion. You, you don't see that in conference championship games. No. Uh, that, was, that was amazing to watch. Hey, Carson Palmer is one of the top five Quarterbacks in the yeah. league, hands down. Yeah, that's I mean, a true defense. Right? That's a real defense that Arizona yeah. has yeah. right there. I just I take issue with the Cam Newton celebrating a two point conversion when they're up forty to fifteen. I think I'm he's got a, I think he's got a little little, little ego, big yeah. head yeah. kind of problem, which is I take issue yeah. with, which makes it tough for me to root for that yeah. team. He, I'll say this: Cam is a cigar guy. He buys cigars from the retailer, um, and he is a cigar guy. So that uh, will always be a plus in my book. I, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the Panthers, but he's a cigar guy. He likes dab on Cam. Dab <laughs> on. What's that, John? This is a dab on his dance move. Yo, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dance moves. That's yeah. another thing. So yeah, but, one, one yeah. unique thing, though, that uh, in regards to the cigar, um, I, we'll all be in the Dominican Republic next week um, for our annual sales meeting with our whole sales team. So the whole of Florida Dominicana crew will be down at our farm and factory seeing our vertical integration and how that makes us unique and special. Education is huge for us uh, with our team. However, at the end of that week on Thursday, I will be flying from the DR out to San Francisco, and I'll be present uh, over this uh, that weekend of the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. Um, and we'll be doing some events with the football cigar on that area. So if anybody's listening, uh, we will be out there. We have those events posted on our website um, we'll be sharing those on social media. So if you're in the California area, Santa Clara, San Francisco market, uh, please come out, uh, join us for some of our events. We'll also be in Sacramento uh, over the weekend as well. Uh, and on uh, the following Monday after the Super Bowl event, the big game, the big, the big, bowl. <laughs> the big game, the big bowl. edit, uh, after the big game after the weekend, we'll be in, uh, in Napa on Monday. Uh, doing some wine tastings and some things with some cigars out there. So we welcome anybody to join us and uh, out there over that weekend, uh, the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. And uh, appreciate anybody's support and looking forward to seeing everyone it's out a, It's there. a tough life for you, John, huh? Yeah, he, gets out of his sales, he gets out of his sales meeting and he gets to go to the games. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I mean, nap, and then the nap, but you know, because you know, I'm a little tired after the game. I'm gonna go relax and nap for a little while. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I, you know, there's there's a lot of tougher things to do. I guess uh, the reality is, you know, we're, we're very, you know, very fortunate to get to travel as much as we do, and uh, and see the places we get to see. However, at the same time, uh, you know, the, the thing that, that people don't get to see is the sacrifice of of having no normal existence other than traveling and smoking cigars and being in those environments, which is great. Um, and I would never exchange it for anything. Uh, however, uh, you know, as you, you know, I'm relatively young, but as you do get older, some of those times uh, spent at home and being relaxed in one spot is uh, very special. And you, you, you learn to not take that for granted when you have it because it is truly a 365 day a year type uh, type travel schedule that we have. So, but no, I'm not going to say that it's not going to be a good time. Uh, I'm going to Metallica on Saturday night uh, when I get out there with a great friend of mine um, and we're going to be smoking some cigars. So it's, it's going to be a fun filled weekend. Uh, I'd love to have anybody come along for the ride. And if you're out there, we'll be uh, we'll having a good time. Excellent. Will, did you have any more questions for our guests? Um, well, Give me predictions. How about some predictions for the game? I think Carolina takes this by at least fourteen. I mean, I, I think up to twenty points. I, I don't. I don't think it's sense pretty for pain. Carolina thirty-five, 
Denver Broncos, 17. See, I, I had it at Denver, 20, Carolina, 17. Really? Really? Denver, 23, Carolina, 20. Has anybody really? seen what the line is? for? It opened up at four and a half with uh, Carolina being the favorites. Surprisingly low. Which is surprisingly low, and I think they started it low in Vegas because they wanted people to bet on The more people that are going to bet on Carolina after that game right. are going to be uh, – they need more people betting on different sides. So it'll be interested to see where it goes. I'm trying to pull it up right now to see what the line was on it. I think yesterday was at five or something like that. Yeah, it, I think I expect it to go up from that. Carolina, Carolina, six point favorite right now. Wow, a lot of money going on in Carolina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, you know, I got to make another comment too. Um, coaching wise, a lot of people. And this is where I got into trouble too. Ron Rivera had a great year, but the coach of Denver, Gary Kubiak, um, with basically a shot offensive line. Um, his quarterback down and playing a very hard schedule. He did a great job. Um, oh, yeah, that defense. Defense. that defense is vicious. I mean, who would have who would have thought Wade Phillips? Wade Phillips is the defensive guy, but he, not a great head coach. But when it came to the defense, they were they were unbelievable. Yeah. So my my last comment, kind of on the game and those two, you know, the two teams you got going on, Carolina and um, and uh, Denver. You look at the last several Super Bowls, you know, last five or six or seven, right? You look over the last, like, ten years, you've got – there's two different types of teams that have won. Super professional teams, you have the Patriots, you have um, the Packers that have won um, in that period of time. You've got the teams that have won the Giants, which I don't like talking about because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> but you look, those are all very professionally and really well-managed teams. And then you look at the other teams that have won. It's teams that are having – a great time on the field and really bought into what the uh, what's going on. You know, look at Carolina. Coach is great. Defense is fantastic. All those draft picks that they've had are paying off. Cam Newton just has a great time. They enjoy playing the game uh, at the same time, and it really turns into uh, turns into victories. And I'm going to say, if if the uh, if the Panthers win and they win decisively, I mean they've got to go down as one of the best teams to ever to ever play. I mean that's they're, they're incredible if Zero they down. do that. It, so like I said, I agree. I was very critical of that schedule because they only played one team with a winning record midseason at that point. Um, but they they really in the playoffs completely different story um, because everyone, including myself, say, "Oh, wait till they play Seattle. They're the best six seed." They dismantled Seattle. Then I said, "Oh, wait till they play the Cardinals. They're, they're they've been playing great." They, I mean, they destroyed the Cardinals. It it was. And you can't even fault – the weather was cold here, but that had nothing to do with it. They would have destroyed mm. them on a regular weather day. Mm. Well, uh, I want to thank our special guests, uh, John and Tony, for joining us uh, today and, and sharing uh, your very special cigar with us. Thank uh, you. The football theme cigar, which is fantastic. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this this afternoon. So. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, thank you both. Will, thanks uh, as always. And that completes this edition of Stogie Geek Shorts. Make sure you check out our live show every Thursday evening, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. Go to cigar-coop.com to find all the latest news and reviews in the cigar industry. Thanks, everyone, for watching.